Hey guys, I'm in the process of installing some numeric shift cables and uh, hoping that'll take care of some of my slop. But now that I've got my shifter apart, I'm finding some other slop. So I wanted to share this and a couple of observations here. So um, part of my slop, so if I lock the shift block here, I go back and forth. Hopefully you guys can see that. Um, that's about four thousandths thick, between three and four thousandths. So I'm gonna either try to find some shim stock or borrow <laughs> one of my feeler gauges and cut it to fit down in there so it's nice and tight. Um, I put the feeler gauge down in there and to confirm it really tightens things up and makes it feel nice. Uh, the other thing, and I've already adjusted this now, but um, I had some, some slop up and down in the shifter as well. Uh, this shifter came installed when I bought the car, and uh, the guy I don't think took a whole lot of time to get it all adjusted and dialed in. And so this jam nut right here uh, basically locks this in and out, or locks this from sliding back and forth. I mean, it's, it's completely tight and free now, but before it had some slop. So really hoping this is going to change the way the car feels, and, and I think the numeric cables are going to go a long way into that too. Um, I think there's just a touch more slop in the ball fitting here to here. Um, I'm going to look at that a little bit more when uh, I get the shim installed, but I'm hoping this will take most of the play out of it. So really digging into this uh, clearance issue, I found that if I, once I got into this, you can see where this little ball, you can see that on my camera, uh, the ball end on here is really pushing in. Make sure you can see what I'm looking at here. Oh, there it is. So you can see there's a lot of wear right in here. You can see there's actually a pretty good detent down in there. And then if you look straight down in, you can see that right, right in here, it's actually pushed down in. So I've got this squared up in the mill. I'm gonna go ahead and, and parallel to this backside. I'm gonna go ahead and cut back into this, get an aluminum piece glued in there come back and square it up and measure it out so that I've got a piece of flat nylon that I'll put in there to really make this nice and slick and it'll have the aluminum for a nice backer in there so I think it's gonna work pretty good it's a little overkill probably but I really want to make this shifter nice and tight I've got it awesome in the up down direction and this will fix the, uh, the left or right I think so I'll check back in and let you know how it goes Alright, so I got my little insert shaped out here. I'm gonna go ahead and get it epoxied in like this. Get it dropped in there. And then I'll re-square it up with the mill, and then I've got just a piece of Teflon to go over the top of it. Alright, so I got my piece of Teflon in there. I've scored the crap out of it. I'm a little concerned with it actually gluing, but Scored it, undercut it, got some negative cuts in there, sanded it real good, cleaned it up real good, so hopefully it'll work. Once it's done drying, I'll clean it up. I'll run one more pass through the mill to square it up and uh, dial it in right to the perfect size of the ball on the end of the shift knob, so. So another update on this shifter. I noticed that when going back and forth, you know, it's nice and easy here, and then you get this point where it gets stiff, and it also pushes this arm over and it gets tight. But what I realized is that down here, see if I can get this on video, as soon as it gets there, the ball is engaged on the bottom and then actually the arm is engaging on the top. And then when you force it over into reverse, you know, it's, it's definitely stiffer, which the car and transmission will be stiff by itself too, but this is adding to it. But once you do that, it's really torquing in and this is the reason why the, 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 there was the big groove that I had to fix and... Um, probably why it blew through the bottom of the of the piece right here so you know my opinion on this B&M short shifter is uh, I wouldn't buy it um, the previous owner put this in so I didn't really have a choice but you know after seeing the design of this seeing the pressure that that ball can do and the damage that it does on this piece 
Um, I wouldn't, wouldn't, certainly wouldn't buy it again. Um, the adjustments, I've also been working on the slop from top to bottom. I got that adjusted out, it's nice and perfect there. And then the other part of the slop I had too, which I showed earlier, you could see there was a little bit of play in the stick going back and forth. And so you can see I've got, I've got a shim in there, uh, just testing it out. That's a 3,000th shim. Um, you get a little bit by tightening these nuts, but not very much. And so that shim really just makes it nice and nice and perfect and no slop. Um, I'll pull that out and put a it, and cut a nice piece and get it put in there and get it fixed in. But uh, that's the update on this. Update on this. I'm going to pull this piece out and add some clearance right here uh, for that arm and see if I can get rid of that stiff spot right there. You know, so see how it, it when you do it, it shoves this piece over against the sidewall. So I think that'll also help quite a bit. So on this piece, you can see where it was interfering. I've added just a little, little rounded spot in there with the, with a round file on it. That should give it enough pass for that arm to not bind up. So we'll put it back on and see how it does. Back again, turns out that first little bit of meat I took out of there wasn't quite enough. So I went back and took a little bit more. So we'll throw this one on and see how it does. Well, hopefully third time's a charm. I had to come back in and uh, take my hole back a little bit more towards the pivot point. So I was binding up just in here once I got further down. So right up on the left side here. So. A little shot of the aluminum in the back. I glued a Teflon or a nylon surface on top. So I expect it to be a lot better. All right, so I decided to go ahead and put some measurements to this to help anybody out that may want to do it. These are the numbers that I come up with, good starting points anyway. So here's your piece as it sits like this. You get the pin on the side. Um, this is sitting just like this. And so I measured from the bottom bottom radius of the here on up to the first edge of my um, groove right here. Look at the tip of my fingernail. And then I measured up to the top edge of that. And those two measurements are 1.81 and 2.2. And then, you know, kind of looking down in, I didn't disturb anything below about 0.23 inches deep. So if you want to do your file and try to keep it within those bounds, and that'll be a, a good place to start. All right, so I got all the clearance and done, and I'm very happy with it. Remember how this piece was rocking over against the side? It's not rubbing or binding anything like it was. I've got even pressure all the way across. I've got this adjusted. Um, definitely excited to give this a try. This is gonna work a whole bunch better.